start. Welcome everyone to the endgame class tonight and uh, we'll take a look at a lot of endgame positions and uh, I really like endgames because I, when I grew up, uh, uh, a lot of my coaches, they spend a lot of time helping me to learn all kinds of endgames. So in a world champion Tigran Petrosian school that I went to when I was a kid, they would put a lot of emphasis on the endgames. So I, you know, always felt pretty comfortable about endgames, you know, and, uh, you know, in general, I knew what I need to do. So. This one example I have, we'll do different kinds of end games today. So this one example is a game, and this game is uh, played between two very strong grandmasters. This is uh, Ceparinov, uh, Grandmaster Ceparinov from Bulgaria, and Grishuk. And here uh, Grishuk is blocked and looks like um, block is better because after the move b3, for example, here, if you exchange, king takes b3, and then the, you play a2 and a1, and you're going to be able to queen the pawn. Okay? So that's why it's... Uh, so the idea is he wants to play b3. So you have to find a way here to make a draw. And the idea is to use a fortress. Fortress is, if you're not very familiar with it, it's, a, it's basically a position where opponent could have extra material, but he cannot really make progress. So there will be a few other examples on the fortresses today. So, <coughs> so let's think a little bit here to try to understand what we need to do here because his threat is to play b3, right? And let's say you play h7, and he just plays. He just plays uh, b3, takes, and even though your pawn is actually further advanced, but you cannot do anything to stop his pawn from queening. If you try the move bishop d1, he will simply play the move bishop to h8. Bishop is blocked, and then you play a2, a1, and you're queening. Okay? That is the idea. So, let's see here. This is a, the team is called Fortress. Fortress is, again, you will be down a lot of material, but you'll be able to come up with some kind of uh, uh, position where opponent cannot break through. Okay. Ashish? Oh, bishop takes b4. Okay. Okay, let's see. Bishop takes b4. You're sacrificing your bishop. You realize that. Okay. Now I take. King? King d2. Correct. So the bishop sacrifice is the correct idea. So what white is trying to do here, if black king reaches b2 square, you will lose your pawn and the game as well. So that's why what is he's trying to do here is trying to prevent that from happening. So he's trying to block white king from reaching there. So now he goes here. And now let's say he's waiting a little bit. Yeah, king d2, or you can actually, do the best is to for you to stay here. You stay here on b1. Sure. Yeah, even though he goes here, you continue pushing this pawn. You actually, w you don't need the pawn anymore. You can even give this pawn away. So he will, every time he goes here, what do we see here? A steel mate, okay? So it's, it's a steel mate. So it's amazing that he has a bishop and a pawn, and he, even if he has more pawns on a file, this position, <coughs> he cannot win. See, he can play this move and force you to give up the pawn. So, but in this position, you just stay here. The only way, you know, the only way you can lose is if you play a really terrible move here. Like, only way to lose here is actually if you go to the corner. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, you know, you self-mate you self yourself, you know? That's the only way you can lose this game. It's, it's, it's very similar to the position with two knights, okay? Okay? With two knights also, right? Let me set up an example for you. So this is correct. So, 
so one second, Ashish. Uh, so, so same thing is with uh, two knights, yeah? Let me show you. So it's a draw, but you can lose it. So there's two knights. Everybody here know that two knights versus a king with no pawns is a draw? Okay, so this is theoretical draw, but you still have ways to lose it. But again, it's similar. You have to make a really terrible mistake at the end to lose this. So let me show you how it's going to work. So let's say he goes here. You will go here. Then he will go here. So, so he, he will basically give you a check, something like this. Check. If you go here, it's a draw. But if you make the mistake to go here, then he brings the knight in to mate. So that's why this positions, I don't think you can claim a draw. If you're playing, I don't think you can stop the clock and say, oh, this is a theoretical draw. You still have to play the 50 moves to make the draw. Otherwise, you know, you still have ways to lose, so to speak. Okay? So, that, so you saw that one position with the pawn on a2, black pawn on a3, and dark square bishop. That's one draw for you via fortress idea. Okay. I have another position for you. Most of you should know this position. This is another end game where it seems like there shouldn't be any question about who is winning here. White is up a bishop, plus he's got an extra pawn. But guess, what is the evaluation of this position with correct play for both sides? Draw. 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 Ken. It's a draw because the, the bishop's the wrong color. Absolutely. This position is called uh, the wrong, it's a wrong color bishop. This bishop is the wrong color. It has to be dark square bishop to be able to win. So that's why this is a wrong colored bishop. And that's why this position is a draw. Let me show you how it's draw. So a king comes up. It seems like you're gonna start making some progress. So you push. And now, again, you can always go to the wrong square, yeah, <laughs> and lose. But if you go here, this position cannot be won because the bishop cannot push the king away from the dark square. So remember, the side pawns, you have to be very, very careful because sometimes even with the extra bishop, you cannot win this position. Even if you have a couple of more pawns on an h file, you still cannot win this position. There is one position you could win by using a uh, restriction idea. <coughs> that is this position. If let's say he's, he's not being careful, he, he stays there, right? There's one position you can win, look. Let's say opponent is not being careful, he doesn't go to the corner. <coughs> so you, you make a waiting move and now he goes here, right? Guess what? Now he's losing. See, he has to be careful here. Who can show me the win here? Yes? H6. Now, now you're telling him that he's not going to go back that easily. So he's going to try to get here. Go via this direction here. Now another neat move needed here to win, to win this game. Continue. Yes, not this way, because this way he will go king to c6, g6, okay? Bishop to h7. Absolutely. Now you're covering the squares, so the king cannot get there. Now he goes here. Again, if you make one mistake, he's going to get that position. What do you do here to avoid that mistake? <coughs> what is the correct move? King h5. Correct. Now all the squares are taken, you're slowly pushing the king back, so he goes here. I think that maybe this, g6 is fine too, g6 is fine too. Now, absolutely. Now after the king arrives to g7, now it's a win, because what do you do? You move the bishop away and you queen. So again, in a theoretically drawn positions, it's still, this is, I'm showing you this so you, uh, you know, 
you avoid messing it up and losing. Also, you play it out until the end. Maybe your opponent will make a mistake. So you don't, you know, you're not, you know, will be, you're not facing the grandmasters where you know, oh, it's, you know, it's theoretical draw, you shake hands. No, you play it out because it's still a chance. It's still a chance. I've seen people go wrong and make mistakes in the end game. So, king too far away from yeah, King, he was just not being careful. If he would have stayed in the corner, so if you're defending, just stay in the corner, remember. Just stay in the corner. Don't go away from the corner. Then there's nothing he can do to win this. Okay? So, because now he doesn't have a way to get you out of here unless, he, you know, he still mates you. That's the only way he can do it. Okay? Everybody understand this position? This is called wrong color bishop. Okay? Wrong color bishop position. Okay. Okay. Here, uh, white to play. The difference of this position here is if the rooks are existing, with the rooks' existence on the board, two knights and rook can easily win this position. Okay? Two knights and a rook can easily win against a rook and a king. Yes, if the rooks are swapped up, then yes, you'll be able to. Uh, Make a draw possible. But what's the idea here for you to try to win this? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, well, white to play, you want to try to draw this. It's a very creative idea, yeah? Rook c7 check? Okay, please raise your hand first and let me call you first, okay? So rook c7 check. I don't see this. Uh, what is this will do? Let's say I go here. Yes, but then I go here, let's say. Then you run out of checks, and now I, I will start to bring my pieces in to consolidate them, you know? To consolidate them. So what do you Same do here? here? White to play, and you want to achieve a position where you'll be able to make a draw here. But it's not, a, it's not so simple. It's, it's a very nice move here that you need to find. To achieve a theoretically drawn position. To achieve a position that will be theoretically drawn. Again. Rook to uh, h5. Rook to h5. Look at that move. Sacrificing the rook. If he takes you, you take, and this is a draw. And by the way, if he doesn't take your pawn, the best move is for you to push this pawn. Because some positions you can lose this. If your pawn is on a fourth rank, it's blocked, you can lose this. On a sixth rank, it's a draw. Okay? <coughs> yes, 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 yes. So knight takes, of course, right? That's the question. Now, of course, if I take this, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing, <laughs> even, there is nothing even to discuss here, you know? There's nothing even to discuss here. So, black will win this. But now, Ken, what is your follow-up? You push the pawn and you trap the rook, you see? With very few pieces on the board, you have a very nice idea. You're using some tactical ideas to make a draw. Otherwise, you would lose this game. So what this tells you is when you're playing chess, you always have to keep your imagination on, yeah? Always look for something creative. You can never, you know, say, oh, it's already over. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, it's a very, very creative way of making a draw here. Yes, it's a smothered rook, absolutely correct. And the problem is now, let's say he moves, takes, and now we have the theoretically, again, drawn position. Got it? Okay, now the next position we have. So everybody understand this position? If you don't play rook h5, you can try to play this, but you will lose because two knights and a rook eventually will be just too strong, too much power. Why to play and draw? Yeah, you can't really win this because, he, you know, he, he can put a bishop on d5, king comes in. I mean, you're, you're, you're in serious risk of losing this game. You are in serious risk of losing this. Well, he's going to go bishop d5 next move, and he's going to unpin the, um, you know, 
Right now you have a cut, but he can play bishop d5 and then there's no longer going to be a cut. So what is the move here? It's white to play. Yes? King f2. King f2, the problem with that move is he goes bishop d5. And now he's going to cross, and he's just probably going to come here and win your pawn. He's got that <coughs> f pawn to use as a deflection or a decoy. You know, like he slowly he will he will penetrate in with the king on c2, and I think that might be able to win this. Sure. Let's let's see. Let's try here. Now we see shelter. King H shelter. I just go here now. And this pawn is still there. If you didn't have this pawn, yes, you'll accomplish a draw. But now he just push, push. And you're going to have to sacrifice the rook at some point. And f pawn will still win. OK. Uh, so basically, passive defense is not going to work. We have to be creative here. Yes? Rook h5. Rook h5. OK, push. Possibly a push. <coughs> B takes here. Okay, you have check and rook b6, so you have that actually. Okay, I can't play this yet. Okay, but let me just go bishop. Let's say here first. Well, then I get that. So my king can come in now. How, how can you come in if, if I can just pass the move? Well, now, now I can come, right? And then play f2. OK, yes? Why king d2? Sure. And if bishop d5? The point is, if you come this way, then I can start using, let's say, activate my king. And I start using this guy. This guy is pretty far advanced, too. So I have, I have uh, two, I will have eventually two pass pawns. Oh, I see. It'll, be, it'll be very hard to prevent both of them. It's not like he wins immediately, but he will win gradually. You know, gradually he will win this. Try to remember the first position you had today and see if you can do something similar to the first position in this one because you learn that there could be some kind of fortresses there, right? So see if you can make something similar. Adi. Rook takes c4. Okay, rook takes c4. It seems like this just loses to bishop a6, right? It looks like rook is gone. The game is over. But now, is it over? King? F3. F3. Perfect. He has to take it. <laughs> now we take it. But it's a race. A race begins. Whoever gets to here, D2 square, will win the race. White King's going to win that race. I wait. I wait for a mistake. I, I wait. Huh? And now, bishop d3, I say no. I wait. I try to somehow shoulder it in, you know, just try to get it somehow. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, once the king is on A1, it's a dead draw, yeah? So, yeah, so, you know, we all, I always talk about having a pawn wedge, you know, the pawn on a third rank or sixth rank, it's always an advantage. But sometimes in an end game, like when there's only a few pieces left, it could be a disadvantage, you know? It's advantage most of the time to have a pawn like that, you know, near, 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 you know, on the sixth rank or on third rank. But sometimes in end games, as we're seeing in these few examples, it could be also a disadvantage sometimes. So this position again cannot be won very similar to the first position that you've seen. Okay? A very good question from Claudia. Let's see here. Let's change this to a dark square bishop. I think this is a win, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. <laughs> so, with light square bishop is a draw, but th this is a uh, not not an easy question. Is this a win? A turn doesn't matter. You can get any any position you want. You turn. Let's say it's his move. You can. I think it's a draw still. Yeah. I know, but the thing is, if you, I'm not going to take it. If I take it, Ashish, yes. But I go king b1. Yeah. Like, you almost need, like, two moves here. You need two moves. King on c2, bishop on a3. Okay. Then I have to take it. You understand? So if the bishop comes on a3, I won't take it. But if your king comes closer to me, then it's a stalemate. So I think this is a draw. I really don't see a way to make progress. Okay, of course, I could win if your king is not on a1. If your king is not on a1, I could win that. I would keep the bishop in and win. But here, so even with both color bishops, looks like this is a draw. We don't need engine, Ashish. You know, just just try to you know try to see if you can find ideas. Yeah, yeah. Just just try to see ideas. What are the ideas? There are two ideas here: bishop b4 or bishop a3, right? The problem is, it's just no ideas, Ashish. Bishop c3, same thing, same exact thing. Don't take it, eh? don't take it. You take it, you lose it. What's the difference? It's, it's a win, it's a win anyway. So, No, but he goes king v1. I don't see a way of to make progress here. Then, then you win. Then you win. <laughs> no, but okay. If it goes here, you don't have to. But here, you can take it already. As long as you know your king and pawn endgame, you can take it. Okay. All right. So another position. Okay. A lot of people actually uh, don't study too much fortresses. That's why I picked this uh, topic today because a lot of people, you know, don't know. You know, like even what fortress is, what it really accomplishes, but. There's so many positions you can save, you know, to make a half a point. Uh, I'll show you another position here. Even some very strong players that I talked to, grandmasters, you know, like they had no idea about the next position I'm going to show you, that that position is actually drawn. So let's look at this one now. So you're playing with um, black pieces. Obviously, two bishops are stronger than a rook. Two bishops are very, very powerful. But here you're going to be able to come up with an idea to... You know, you're going to come up with an idea to make a draw here. What idea can you do here to make a draw? Same idea as which one? Uh -huh. but, but yeah, but how do, how do we get there? No, that's the question. Okay, Ashish, go ahead. Ashish says e5, okay. Now, the point is if you just capture it, the rook bishop is saying you will drop the bishop. If you move the bishop... Ashish, Ashish, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Ashish, you made me lose. <laughs> See, you, you lose the full rook, my friend. You lose the full <laughs> rook now. 
That's right. Slow down. It's not about being fast. It's about being accurate. Okay. So the first move is correct, right? But now, what's the next idea here? Well, if you give up the rook, it's a problem, yeah. So rook to e6, also. I think that's the point of this. If you give e6, 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 Let's try not to drop our rook, guys. <laughs> you know, just this is not to drop our rook, please. Rook is under attack, so can you move the rook somewhere to gain a tempi? Oh. Every oh. Tempi, right, guys? Adi. No, I, you just don't go there. <laughs> Bishops are strong because they can what? Pin. And, and pin. So just try to avoid putting it somewhere near your king okay okay but if you just go away I take your pawn and this is gonna be a problem you're gonna lose the game uh, sheesh takes see I'm gonna push it I'm not gonna take it push it and this is of course winning position okay something better something better here I wanna see yes Rook to a7, attacking the bishop. Excellent. So if I move the bishop, you take my last pawn. That's going to be a draw. No question there. So we got to continue with this move. Absolutely, you keep attacking it. Now, if it goes this way, you go rook c3, and you know you can just just even take no pawns left here. Okay. Uh, and if it goes bishop d6, again, don't be, get creative with this, you know, because that's what I'm just going to take and just stay with the same concept. You go here, and now. Again, take, take, and you go here. Yeah, Got it? Okay. Now, let's continue with this. F5, of course. And now. No, no, Ashish, you've been slipping on this one. <laughs> Black to move now. You have to remember those fortresses, right? See if you can get another fortress like that. <laughs> um, yes. Rook, uh, correct, correct, yes. And now? You don't need the pawn, right? No. Get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of the pawn. Oh, but that's a draw if he takes. And this is actually that same position, Claudio. You remember you say the, the, this is a, the position where the color is but it's a draw so that tells you that's your confirmation ashish you know that's your confirmation that this position is drawn another example we see here okay all right i have a question for you here and this is a very interesting question again this is what i mentioned a lot of people don't know about this i can give you a position you have a bishop knight versus king and queen who knows a position? Uh, who knows a position where it's a draw? The fortress position here. Not so many people know this. The, even grandmasters don't know this, or you know, international masters, or very strong players. It's just I happened to study this a long time ago, and it's a very good uh, thing for, to know, you know, for knowledge. This is a draw. No, 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 no. No, I'm just asking you first. Before I set up the position, maybe somebody knows. Anybody have an idea? A position, you can put your pieces 
anywhere you want, the white pieces, bishop or knight and a king, and you can say, hey, this position is a fortress. Have you seen anything like this? You have, this is not the position, but you can, yes, uh, Adi. That's fortress. Okay, let's see. So Adi, Adi claims that this might be a fortress. But, okay, Adi, uh, then play. So you're just going to go back and forth, sort of? Yeah. Okay, let's say you go there. I go. First thing, I put the queen here. You cannot move too much now, right? Mm -hmm. Then I start moving, Adi. Oh, the king can't take it. Or C2, I mean. No, I was just, just an example, you know? There's, you move. You cannot move the knight. You move the bishop. I take your mate. And mate. Okay. So your fortress, guys, should be some way that the king cannot get too close like that. Okay. If the king gets too close like that, that doesn't work. Okay. Any other suggestions? Any other uh, creative stillmate ideas? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's try. Let's try your fortress. <coughs> So something like this, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna let's say it's your turn. You move here or uh, sure. so I will say so go here. Um back to C one with the bishop. No. Bishop? Well, either one. Either one. Okay. So I start bringing my piece in. Not easy, you know? No. All right. No, why not bishop b Bishop a2. Queen b2, b1 mate? Or when now or before? You got to figure out the position where the king cannot come so close. The knight in b1 and the bishop in b2? Knight on b1? And bishop in b2? Sure. Let's give it another try. And then I'll show you the... I'll show you the real fortress, okay? <laughs> this, uh, okay, but it, this is very similar to the previous position. So I just bring the queen down. Okay, let's say you go here. And I just start bringing the king in. So you, so you will sit, right? Or I don't know, here. I start bringing in. Let me keep this here. The king reaches on b3, it's over. Okay, Claudio, what about you? Any ideas? Okay, so let's say my king is here, my queen is somewhere here, something like this. So you're going to go like this. Sort of, okay, so this idea, okay, let me try to go here first. So your turn, you go here. I go here. Oh, this is already Suksuang, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. So check, Claudio. It's just now. Yeah. So, so the the, re, the 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 way the fortress works here, it's same setup, but instead of the knight on a one, knight is on d four. Okay. Now what happens here is, bishop controls this squares, and knight controls this squares. You know, so it's like it's the king is barricaded, so <laughs> there is no way. There's no way to get closer to him. Your move, knight looks a bit awkward on a1. I'm afraid there might be some kind of suksavang there. Here, here it's, you know, here it's, uh, you know, uh, for sure this is a, a fortress here. So now, let's say he tries to win this, yeah? So he goes here, check, check. 
Of course, don't go here now. Now I just go here. Here we're not as cramped, you know, as the position with the knight on a1. Knight on a1, we're a little bit cramped. The king has no squares to go to either. So here, if you sit, I sit. If you sit, I sit. If you go here, now, what is the move here? What is the only move here? Uh, uh, no, king a3, queen b1, he gets behind it. Ay, ay, ay. Absolutely, bishop a1, correct. Yes. And look at that. A again, everything is taken. That knight on d4 protects. Yeah, that's why they say knight belongs in the center, remember? That's another example for you. Knight belongs in the center. Check. Back. Don't block the bishop. Huh? Don't block the bishop because he'll take your knight. All right? Uh, only when it's trivial. <laughs> only when it's trivial. Like you got, you, you know, like there is absolutely like, you know, it, it also a little bit depends who you're playing. If you're playing, let's say, you know, 2,000 rated players, 1,900 player, and you're like down to a queen and a pawn and he's got like a lot of extra pieces, yeah, you can probably resign there. But if you close, you know, if you close, you see some steel made tricks, some things, try it out. You know, I always recommend my students, you know, you know, especially the young students. There are always mistakes happening. You know, people go fast a little bit. They miss some stillmate ideas. So this, you always see, I'm never surprised, you know, when I see like, a, you know, somebody's totally losing, then he comes back and makes a draw. So at, at the moment, unless you're already like 22, 2300 level, just play it out, play it out. I mean. Yeah, if it's like completely losing position where you're like, you have nothing left. You just have a king left and a pawn and he's got like rooks, queen, you know. <laughs> yes, you resign. You can still still make that way. I was up three pieces on a guy. Yeah. And instead of just taking three pieces and boom, and working with two. Well, there was, a, there, there was a game I was watching. There was a grandmaster playing online and he was just totally winning. And then he tries to show off, try to get multiple queens, you know. <laughs> instead of just mating and then he just suddenly promotes another queen and it's a steel mate <laughs> but it's a weird one because <laughs> his opponent still had a pawn you know but when he promoted he pinned him you know so he couldn't so it was you know but yeah i would suggest play it out yeah. you know play it out until you're like for sure you know you lost you know uh because strange things happen in chess even like when grandmasters play it's, it's you know all kinds of you know so similar fortress is this way, right? So just try to take a picture of this position or write it down because I think it will be useful for you to know this, that this is a fortress. Okay? Knight has to be in the middle, supported by the bishop and king in a corner. <coughs> that is another fortress, okay, for you. Situation, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, actually, I've had a game. One of my students was playing a game, and he is a strong player, like international master, and he didn't know about this, you know, and he had no idea, like you know, like that he can actually get this because he was just shuffling around, trying to come up with something. Instead, you know, he had a chance maybe to get this position, and then it would have been a draw. So I've seen actually actual game in a queen, you know, because. Sometimes the pawn queens, and then you have, you're trying to chop his pawn. So you take all his pawns, and he queens. And the thing is, this is very important for two reasons. Not only for the defense, but also when you have the queen. You know which position you need to try to prevent from happening. So you're not just learning to draw. You're learning how to also avoid this position. Because if you avoid this, most likely, most likely you will win. This one, this one, I've, I've, I know for sure there's, there's no way to make progress. I mean, there's just no, there's no way to get closer. The question is if you can get to this position. That's, that's a little bit tricky, but you can. Okay. All right. The next position we have here is black to move. And here, player with the black pieces, he, he is completely winning here. Yeah, so his last move was the careless move, king b6, 
He probably thought there's no difference. I mean, I have three extra pawns. There's no way I'm not going to win this game. And now suddenly, you have an unbelievable way of making a draw here. Because it's just, it just looks trivial here. Three connected pass pawns with the knight being able to protect. I mean, it just looks completely over. But now you will see and learn another fortress here. Okay? You will see and learn another fortress here that you could use in your games. Had he played, had he played the move knight d4, he would have he would have won the game. Had he had played that move, no, it's a draw, draw, a draw. draw for white. So we're trying to somehow trap it, the white queen in d1 uh, because of, of the structure of double pawns. I don't know. Aha. Uh -huh. So you're trying to do a stalemate? Yes. No, not stalemate, but that somehow so, that the... Uh-huh. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. I will think. All right, think, think, yeah. Yes? Bishop f5. Bishop f5. Okay, that's the most natural move, and uh -huh. he's going to play knight e5. Mm -hmm. But the uh, bishop can pass, so bishop e6. But then I take... Then I will bring the king here, and... Promote. Yeah. Okay, so Claudio has an interesting idea. So instead of bishop pass, what do you suggest? Bishop takes. Bishop takes. This is interesting. Sacrificing the bishop. So uh, I take. <coughs> now you take. Well, the question is which pawn, yeah? That's a big question, though, yeah? You grab this pawn, you're going to lose for sure. F pawn is too strong. So you grab this one, but, he, but it seems still it should be a win, no? It seems like it. But what do you do? <coughs> King g3, attacking the pawn. And now he goes here. And now, again, same problem. He can never access the squares, you know? Because if he does that, it's going to be a... Yeah. going to be a steel mate. Got it? So there is one more trick here I can try to do here to win this. I can play the move h2. Try to lure you in, you know, lure you in to take my h2 pawn because then I have the f pawn is a win here. f3. Knight takes, you're back to this position. And again, this position is a draw. That's why knight is not as strong as, you know, a bishop, for example, because positions like this, you see another example, it's especially here. See, uh, if when you take, he doesn't have enough time to protect this. If he, had the, if he can get a knight on g5, he will protect it, but he doesn't have time to get there, okay? So that's another fortress position for you to remember, okay? All right. And our last position for today. White to play and draw. You're down a queen for a rook here. But if you know this idea, you're going to be able to make a draw. And it's right now. If you don't do it right now, it's going to be over. Sure. No, no, the pawn is going this way. So what do you do? You have to make sure... You set up the cut, yeah? Adi. Rook F3. Aha, uh -huh. rook F3. Now, the king is cut, cannot cross. If he sacrifices the queen for the pawn and a rook, he cannot win because it's a side pawn. So he goes, he, he goes here. Continue. Rook H3, you just sit. All you got to do is go back and forth. Back and forth. That's all you got to do, okay? So he pushes again. Absolutely. All That's all you do. If he checks you, don't think about blocking with the rook, okay? You got to keep the cut there, okay? So king h2. And now what do you do? Absolutely. Okay, this is what you got to remember. A position like this, you bring the rook here, cut, and... If it's a H pawn, he cannot win. 
If we push this pawn one square up, same position, it's a win, okay? If we had this position, pawn has to be on g2. It has to be on its original square. If it's like this, you achieve the same thing. This is losing position because what's going to happen here, he's going to be able to go behind it, okay? Behind it, and then, yeah, like he's going to check. Let's say you play here. Check. And see, he's going to attack you. Attack you. Get behind because now he can get it. But the, uh, the original position, he doesn't have space to do that. Okay? So pawn has to be on its original square to achieve a draw. Okay? Okay. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, attending this class. And we'll see you on Thursday.